What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, Bolo, and I am back once again showing you a video tutorial. This tutorial is to show how Logic can be used just like FL Studio. Now, I know a lot of us that use FL Studio love the capabilities of us going into our folder, picking out drums, swinging them into um, uh, into our pattern and we're done. It doesn't matter if the drums the 16 bit, 24 bit, 32 bit, all that stuff. It just works real quick. And you know, in Logic, it came built in with the ES24 sampler, which only uses 16 bit sounds, which is like kind of crazy to me. Well, 16 and 24 bit, but you have to go through so much just to get a sound that you like, then you have to import it in, then you have to tell it the the keyboard parameters where you want it to go and, you know, make sure it's uh, in mono mode or stereo mode, all that stuff, that it just takes too long to do it. However, I have a way to where it won't take that long to do it. And it's fairly simple, and it's called contact. Now, I know some of y'all are saying, well, we could use battery for that, which you can. You can use battery. However, even in battery, you still have to assign something to a pad. And then, say, for instance, if you want to go up and down the key ranges with it, you will have to set a parameter in that. In contact, you do not have to do that. And another plus side on that is contact uses only the amount of power that you put into it. So I can flood my whole list full of contact instruments and it won't use no power. Like the laptop I'm on, it's an older Mac. I only have three gigs of RAM in it, and I make some great beats in it, and I rarely have any power, you know, losses by, you know, you know what I mean, by using a whole bunch of power or whatever. So let's get to it. I got a contact uh, uh, player. I have my instrument pulled up right now. This is actually a contact five. Um, I'm not sure if it works in player. You might want to check it out, but I'm pretty sure it probably is going to work in player too. So as you can see, I'm opening up my contact, and I already have a drum sound in here, but I'm going to take that out. So I'm going to show you how this works. Like I already have my um, folder pulled up. And like if you want to find your folders or whatever, all you got to do is go to the file menu and then locate where your folder is at. Like my folder is set on um, my desktop, and I already got it pulled up already, so I got my drums and stuff already. So I'm going to go into uh, one of my folders here. And as you see, when I click on the folder, when I double click on it, it opens up the folder down here at the bottom. So when I double click that, it opens up the folder here on the bottom. And I have my, I make sure I select my auto button so I can scroll through my sounds. Simple. So what I want to do is like if I want to hear a crash, you know, let me, let me turn this on. So when I want to hear certain sounds or whatever, so like my kick. These are like sounds I already got saved. So when I want to scroll through them, I can scroll through all of the sounds. So say, for instance, I want to use this snare. So let me show you how cool this is. When I take this snare, all I have to do is swing it into the main menu right here or the main section right here. And then when I play it on my keyboard, it automatically plays. Now, say for instance, I want to do a drum roll and I want to go down an octave. I don't have to do anything else. It's already set. So when I play it, watch this. Simple as that. Done. So I say for instance, I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like a like a short little beat and I'm going to show you how this works. So um, make sure my quantize is on and let me see. 
let's just uh, do something quick. Hopefully, it doesn't mess up nothing. And basically, I'm done. Let me take this off here. That's what my mic is going through. So I got that in there, and, you know, everything is quantized. I got my clap in there. It's cool. Okay, so let's say now I want to add a, and let's just say for the purposes of this video to do it quick, I'm going to add a bass because if you add a kick, you know, same thing. If you want to do the bass and kicks, I got a video for that already, so I can show you how to do that and how we can time up the bass and kicks and stuff like that too. So um, I want to add in a duplicate track, a duplicate setting, and inside of here, I want to change this to a bass. So let me find a bass. That's pretty. Like, say for instance, that you could, unless you have really good speakers, you won't really hear, but let's put on some headphones or something. So I swing that in and I have a bass. Now, this is what you have to do when you have basses inside of this program. This is not a program where you press the key and the bass automatically just keeps running. Because if I just press and let it go quick, it's going to do this real quick. But you got to remember that contact is a full-fledged sampler. So if you add a bass in here, you will have to either tune it, which you have to tune right here. But also what you have to do is you have to make sure that the max um, number of notes that you can use is one because you don't want the basses to bleed into each other like this. You hear that? That's when you play two keys at once. You hear that little bleed over and I hate when I get tracks like that. And I'm going to go over a tutorial about that, but this is just for quick purposes right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uh, the settings tool thing right here, so this right here. And what I'm going to do is if I want that bass to release longer, I'm going to have to press, well, use the release and turn the release up longer. And so when I play it now, it has a way longer release. And then also what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go up here to the max and turn that down to where to one and then what that does is it tells it that only one note can play at a time if i have two then two notes will play at a time if i have three then three notes will play for basses you only want one note to play so it will not bleed in even if you accidentally press another bass too early or at the same time so if i play one bass and then i turn around and hit the other bass at the same time it's only one's going to play. So I'm playing two keys at once, three keys, and only the first one that hits is the one's going to trigger. So now I can go all the way up and down the keys. And I don't have to set anything else. Does it remind you of something? Just like FL. Because in FL, you will have to go to the, I forgot what it's called on the side. You have to hit that and make sure that the bases don't cross over. I keep forgetting. But um, so now let me put it in here. Okay. So we just did a nice little drum pattern or whatever. And we can play it out. And let me put the, turn the loop on in here. And then that's how you do it. Contact. I didn't have to set really anything but only the bass. And if I want to use any drum sound, all I got to do is scroll through, drag it onto my screen, and use it. And there you go. Just made a beat like that, and you don't have to do anything else. And the good thing about it is these sounds, when you save your session, they save exactly like this. You don't have to dig up any of your sounds, anything, unless you move your sounds, and that's with any other program. But even if you move it, 
it's so easy to go back and find those sounds because they have a tool to where you can search for that exact sound. And I know with some applications like FL, if you move sounds, they sometimes, if you have similar sounds with same names, they'll pick that sound. Hey, it's a computer. It's just doing what you tell them to do. But this is how you use contact just like FL without having to go through all the BS of going through the ES24 sampler, finding a sound you like, importing it into the sampler, setting the key ranges on it, telling if it's mono or stereo, doing this and doing that, because you can do everything that you want in contact and you see how simple it is. Well, now, this is a quick tutorial. If you guys want me to go in depth with this, I will make another video, but I have to get enough views and enough comments to do it. So if you get me enough views and enough comments, I will go in and I will show you how to use these sounds, manipulate them, EQ them, do whatever you need to do. And I will show you how to actually sample in contact as well. And it is super easy and it's a great tool to use. And as you can see, my CPU is using a little power because I'm using my microphone with this, but I can add numerous amounts like of just drums and stuff. Like all these are going to have uh, the bass drums in here. And it's like, I forgot how much the bass drum was. It's like 120 kilobytes. That's all it's using in my memory. 120 kilobytes. Come on, man. So I can keep adding these and 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 it does absolutely nothing to my CPU. And I can use these sounds and they basically use as much power as like some of the sound fonts. And I do have a video about putting sound fonts in Logic as well. So hit me up. Subscribe, leave some comments. I don't care if they're negative. I don't care if they're positive because everybody has an opinion. If you have any questions, just ask me. I'll answer them back in a timely fashion. And if y'all want me to do another video about this to go a little bit more in-depth about using these sounds in contact, just let me know. Holla.